we will not build this project. Let's be very clear about that. This project is a dud. He wants to consign Victorians to decades of gridlock and congestion. The 18 kilometre east-west link will provide Melbourne's second river crossing and connect the city's freeway network. Reneging on an earlier promise to honour contracts if signed, Labor has now made the controversial east-west link a major election issue. Despite two Supreme Court challenges and continued protests, the government has signed contracts to build the road before the November state election. The RACV supports building the east-west link, saying it completes the missing link between inner and central Melbourne. There's a huge amount of growth occurring in the port um, and also outer Melbourne and people needing to move across the city. There's simply too much for the M1 corridor and when something goes wrong, it has a massive impact uh, on the road network and its, its operation. Detailed traffic modelling undertaken for the east-west link shows that under a do-nothing scenario, many key arterial routes in the inner northern and western suburbs will see major increases in traffic. According to the RACV, better roads are not the only solution to Melbourne's congestion problem. Well, we think the east-west link is an important project for the benefit of the whole of Victoria, uh, as are a number of other projects, including the missing north-east link, and some uh, rail upgrades of the uh, increasing rail capacity in central Melbourne and Melbourne Airport Rail Link, and there's many others. Protesters picketing Capilla Capital, a member of the consortium that has been chosen to build the road, said the group is requesting $500 million in compensation if the project does not get built. Definitely momentum is in our favour, and these people can see that it's uh, highly unlikely that this project is ever going to go ahead. Veteran project protester project Anthony Murphy has opposed new roads in Melbourne since the 70s. But in those days, everybody, almost everyone, thought a freeway was a great idea. There was a small minority of inner suburban people and bicycle activists who didn't agree. But really, we were always going to lose. But now, what's changed now is that we've got three quarters of the public behind us on this one. You know, there have been two opinion polls, both showing around three quarters of people in, in favour of spending the billions on public transport. You know, for the last 50 years, we've had all the billions sucked up by the road lobby. And what's happened? We've got more congestion. We've got people sitting in traffic jams for not moving for minutes at a time, sometimes hours when there's a bad accident. It's not working. And even to get three quarters of people behind the public transport spending means that even most car drivers don't believe it's going to work. Mr Murphy recently won an appeal in the Supreme Court, yet failed to gain an injunction to stop the government signing contracts before the state election. Trains Not Toll Roads, an anti-East-West link campaign run by Yarra Council, is promoting a train line to Doncaster as an alternative solution to Melbourne's congestion problem. We don't think that a Doncaster rail is a, is a short or medium term solution. We think that improving the Doncaster area rapid transit, which is the express bus service uh, which currently comes from the inner city up to Doncaster, is a much better solution. Unlike CityLink, the government will collect the tolls to spend on future public transport and infrastructure projects. There are concerns, however, the money may be very low due to poor traffic modelling. They have just basically used economic puffery to try and boost the number and uh, make it look like it makes a return, but it's actually going to lose money and the, they haven't as yet disclosed the tolls. They don't want to talk about the initial traffic numbers because all the recent tunnel projects in other states have opened with very low uh, numbers because people choose not to use them um, because of high tolls. Politics professor Brian Costa says it's unusual for a government on such a narrow margin to be signing such a big contract. The government has been pretty steadfast in saying we're going to sign the contracts on this before the, the election, which in a sense, in reality, if not in law, locks in the any incoming government, whether it's the Napthine government, whether it's um, the Labor, gov Labor government, into this policy, which there's been no chance of the people voting on it, and I'm sure the opposition will hammer this, that you know the government is signing you up to large expenditures and for the sake of a couple of months or a couple of weeks even, uh, are not letting you pass judgment on it. You claim it's a good project, release the full business case, explain it to the public. You reckon it's a good project, take it to the election, let the people decide. 
A leader and RACV survey has also identified many other existing traffic problems which are currently frustrating Victorians. There's a whole range of suburban and country projects, including these key projects we've been speaking about and smaller scale projects that must be done. So any new government must have a plan. It is clear that cross-city traffic issues will not be resolved while both sides of politics remain so divided on the issue of the East-West link. Joel Scanlon for Watch.